they've just arrived for an operation in the Arctic. Whether it's an exercise or an actual combat operation, the real enemy here is the cold. In the cold, everything takes longer. In the cold, every job is harder. But what most soldiers want to know is, how dangerous will the cold be for me? Well, the answer is, cold injury is preventable. If you know the techniques and follow them, you can withstand temperatures down to 60 below zero, and even colder, without injury. It's all in knowing how. And that's what this film is all about. To begin with, we'll talk about your nighttime routine, getting ready to hit the sack. The first thing you should do is visit the latrine. You'll be drinking a lot of water, and if you don't go now, you're going to wake up in the middle of the night and have to spend 20 minutes putting your clothes back on again. In fact, your clothing dictates a lot about how you do things in this climate. You're looking at the clothing issue for just one man, Getting dressed or undressed is no small job. One of the most important rules always is to keep moisture away from your clothing and body. Gear that's wet has lost much of its ability to keep out the cold. Brush off your clothing before entering your tent. The warmth of the tent would melt any loose snow and leave your clothes wet. Always use a light brushing motion. Never rub. Rubbing the snow would turn it to water and soak through. Personal hygiene, shaving, brushing your teeth and so on, seems like a nuisance in the cold. You'll be tempted to skip it. But taking proper care of yourself becomes very important up here. For example, shaving reduces the risk of skin problems. You'll probably find it best to shave at night instead of in the morning. But whichever, do it every day. You'll sleep on an air mattress that suspends you on a cushion of air off the cold ground. It goes on top of your poncho so it'll stay dry. Fluff out your sleeping bag each night before retiring and in the morning before leaving the tent. This helps to dry it, and the air that stays inside gives better insulation. In very cold weather, you'll use two bags, an arctic bag on the outside, a mountain bag on the inside. It's pretty obvious you won't be able to do much of anything if your feet aren't in good condition. Good foot care is essential. You should be carrying plenty of spare socks. The dirty pair should be hung out to dry and later given a dry wash. Massage your feet and dry them thoroughly. If possible, clean them every night by sprinkling on foot powder and rubbing it off. You don't want to sweat inside your sleeping bag, so strip down to your underwear. Experienced troopers put their long johns in the sleeping bag. They stay dry and they're right at hand when you get up. It's also a good idea to keep your boots close by, in case you need them during the night. And the same with your canteen. Keep your canteen within reach during the night, in case you become thirsty. You'll take turns standing watch on the heater in your tent. If it gets too hot, it could turn the snow floor of the tent to water. If it's not adjusted properly, it could give off carbon monoxide gas, a deadly poison. And there's always the danger of fire. The days and nights are strange in Alaska and the far north. In winter, there may be only a few hours of daylight. In summer, the sun goes down only a short time or not at all, and it never really gets dark. Morning. 
You've been getting yourself dressed every morning since you were little. But up here, you need some special instructions on how to go about it. Over your t-shirt goes a woolen undershirt. You also wear woolen long john bottoms. Wear only one pair of socks, no matter how cold it is. And be sure they're not too tight. Tuck the long johns into the socks. Next come the Arctic trousers with liner. The clothing alone will not keep you warm. You've got to have air circulating between the clothes. The garments must not be tight. They've got to be loose enough for air to circulate. That's why you wear suspenders, but no belt. An Arctic wool shirt goes on next. The idea is to dress in layers, with a layer of air between each layer of clothes. The trapped air is vital for keeping you warm. Double lace the vapor barrier boots as indicated, to make sure they stay on your feet. There's a valve on the side of each boot. Keep the valves closed and do not blow the boots up. The valves are opened only when you're flying. How much clothing you put on depends on how cold it will be and what you'll be doing. There is a field jacket that can be worn in addition to the parka, or you may not need either one. It's very important not to wear so much that you will sweat underneath it all. Clothing that's damp from sweat or anything else can't keep out the cold. And by the way, that's true of clothing that's dirty as well. If you'll need to use your fingers, you'll want to be wearing gloves. Otherwise, wear mittens. They give better protection. You can put the Arctic mittens on over the field gloves. You'll soon discover that hot meals can really make you feel good. They don't just warm the stomach, they seem to warm the soul too. If you're away from base and not able to get the one hot meal a day from the mess tent, it's worth the trouble to make one yourself. You'll find you can get along okay in this climate if you learn to think about everything you do. It's no place to take things for granted. You've got to be thinking all the time. Some heavy work to do? No problem, but you've got to adjust your clothing. Any man who doesn't is liable to work up a sweat, and then he'll be heading for the casualty list. Carelessness such as not wearing issue gloves or mittens when working in sub-zero temperature can also make you a casualty in a very short time. You need to understand that the effect of cold on your body isn't just a question of temperature. The wind has a lot to do with it too. This chart of what's called the wind chill factor shows how it works. For example, if the wind is blowing at 20 miles per hour and the temperature is minus 10 degrees, your bare skin feels a temperature equivalent to minus 53 degrees on a calm day. The point is that you've got to take the wind into account. And yet, on the other hand, if you're overdressed, it's possible to become ill from heat. But this need not be a problem. Just be aware of your own body temperature 
and adjust your clothing to keep you comfortable. One thing you need to keep in mind at all times, never touch cold metal with your bare hands. The problem is that your hand could freeze to the metal. Always wear gloves when you have to touch metal. Anyone who handles fuel needs to use extreme care in this climate. This work exposes you to cold injury more than almost any other. Don't let your clothing get wet. Even more important, don't let any fuel get on your skin. It has a super cooling effect and could cause frostbite very quickly. One of the best means for protection against cold injury is the buddy system. It's very simple. Each man is assigned a buddy. And every little while, you stop and take a close look at your buddy to see if he's showing any signs of frost nip or frost bite. Look for any spot that's turned white on the face or any other exposed part of the body. That's the first sign of cold injury beginning. If everything's normal, that's all there is to it. Remember, cold injury can be prevented if it's caught in time. In a way, the toughest jobs up here are the ones that don't involve much physical activity. When you're moving around, your body produces more heat to fight off the cold. When you're still, the cold gets through to you faster. If your hands start getting chilled, do this. Clinch and unclinch your fists rapidly and hard. If you feel yourself getting chilled all over, get going with some vigorous exercise. Keep at it till you're comfortable again. It's the only cure. The clothing alone will not keep you warm unless you're active. But remember, stop before you begin to sweat. That's very important. Whatever kind of job you're doing, keep in mind, in extreme cold, you've got to be active to stay warm. If you're riding in a vehicle for any length of time, or even if you're driving one, stop every once in a while, get out and exercise. In any unit, certain men have to be even more careful than others because they're more likely to get cold injuries. For example, the risk is greater for men who are overtired or who've been drinking or using certain medicines. You'll need to drink a lot of water, more than usual. Where it's very cold, it's very dry. And you have to make up for it by taking in extra water. Because the climate is extremely dry, your lips get chapped very easily. This can become severe and quite painful. You can keep it from happening by using the chap pomade that's issued. Apply it whenever your lips feel dry. Another problem. How do you get rid of water when it's very cold and there's no sheltered latrine around? The answer is very fast. In a few seconds, you're not going to freeze any vital parts, but don't do this in a strong wind. The same thing with eliminating. Some people just let themselves become constipated, but that turns very painful after a while. Bear yourself as briefly as possible and get it over with. By the way, if your urine comes out a dark yellow, it probably means you're not drinking enough water. It may come as a surprise to know that trench foot can be a problem even in this cold climate. You can normally prevent it. 
Your feet will sweat in the vapor barrier boots. You should remove them each night. Use foot powder liberally and change your socks. If you leave your boots on for several days and your feet remain cold and damp, trench foot can result. A soldier with trench foot should be treated as soon as the military situation permits. The treatment is to dry the feet. Clean them carefully. Apply foot powder and warm them at a gentle temperature. They must be handled gingerly because the skin is tender. If possible, the feet should be left bare and kept elevated. The greatest medical problem you face up here is from the cold injuries of frost nip and frost bite. But remember, injury is preventable if you take action in time. The big difficulty is that you may not realize it's happening unless you stay alert. Most cold injuries occur to the feet, the hands, and the face. Of course, the uncovered part of the face is where the problem is likely to begin. Your feet, hands, and face should feel uncomfortable from the cold. Every once in a while, make some faces. Smile, frown, yawn, and see if you can still feel sensation. If not, you're getting numb spots, a sign that frost nip may be beginning. The injured area first becomes red, then turns pale white. Your body can help detect this when it occurs on the face. If you become aware of it soon enough, it's not serious. Just get the part warm again, and you'll be fine. There are some things you must not do. Don't be misled by that old idea of rubbing snow on. That'll just make the damage much, much worse. And don't try to use a fire for warming, either. Body heat is the only safe way. A hand can be rewarmed by placing it under the armpit. Another don't. Don't massage or rub a cold injury. If you get frost nip on a foot, place it against a buddy's stomach until it's warm again. Again, frost nip is not serious. If you become aware of it in time and start the rewarming promptly, you'll be back to your duties again very quickly. In the cold, perhaps the most challenging kind of duty is the sort that doesn't give you a chance to move around. Holding a defensive position or sensory duty or pinned down under fire, you need to be more alert than ever against cold injury. A man who doesn't become aware of cold injury in the early stage of frost nip may develop the much more serious problem of frost bite. Frost nip is just on the surface. Frost bite is a freezing that goes below the skin. It's usually not possible to tell them apart just by looking. If there's a likelihood that it's the deep freezing of frost bite, it's an emergency situation requiring prompt treatment at an aid station. The fastest available means of transportation has to be arranged for. Meanwhile, the frozen part must not be warmed. It's okay to keep the part from getting any colder, but don't hold it near a stove or fire. If a frost bite is warmed and then refreezes before a medical officer can begin treatment, the damage will be much more severe, perhaps even requiring amputation. Don't rub with snow. Don't massage or bend the part. Just wait for the transportation.
most medicines are contraindicated for frostbite because the effects on circulation or body heat may cause more severe damage. Caution. In a rotor blast, the wind chill temperature can be extremely low. Move through quickly. Exposure for more than a short time can cause frost bite. Soldiers, the happiest thing about a training exercise in this climate is that it's soon over. It is admittedly an uncomfortable place to live for very long. Uncomfortable, but not dangerous. Cold injury is preventable if you follow the rules. Keep your clothing gear in good shape. Stay alert to detect frost nip as soon as it begins. Practice the buddy system at all times. Remember the points you've learned about in this film, and you'll climb aboard for the trip back to base as safe and healthy as when you arrived. Many thousands of men have done it before. You can too. Commanders and medical officers of units preparing to operate in a cold climate should be aware that invaluable advice and assistance on the medical problems can be obtained simply by contacting the U.S. Army Research Institute of Environmental Medicine at Natick Labs, Massachusetts. <laughs>